What's up YouTube? Jeff back again from High on Android and DopeTechDaily.com and today I'm bringing you guys my official full review of the Motorola Droid Turbo 2. Now a lot of you guys probably don't even know that I had this phone because I didn't do an unboxing. Most of the times when I get a new phone I do an unboxing, do some comparisons, maybe some camera samples. But I got this over the holidays and I didn't actually end up doing an unboxing and everything because I got it a little late. Sort of made a late decision to buy this. But I figured, why not go ahead and give it a full review? I've been using it over the holidays. I want to give a quick comparison as well to the Moto X Pure. And also a lot of people asked me to do the review. They said they were interested. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Now, the, Mo then the Droid Turbo 2 is only available on Verizon, which is one of the reasons I hesitated to pick it up. You can see it has the Verizon logo on the front on this screen protector. Uh, like material that's over the shattered shield display. Talk about that more in a minute. You can remove this and get a stock one that doesn't have the logo there, but you know, it's a little displeasing. I don't want to have to do that and remove it and put on a new one. So I just, you know, it, I don't like it, but I've left it there. It's not the biggest deal. So let's actually look at the build really quick and do a quick comparison as well to the Moto X Pure. I don't want to make this purely about, no pun intended, I don't want to make this purely about the Moto X Pure versus the Droid Turbo 2, but they are very similar phones, and I did a really long review on the Moto X Pure, so I will compare it from time to time. And also, that should make this video a little bit shorter, so you guys don't have to sit here for 30 minutes, as I usually do with the full reviews. So if you look around the body of the phone, you can see it's got a 5.4-inch display. It does have some pretty sizable bezels in the top and the bottom. You can see I've got the gold variant with the black leather on the back. It's got some Droid branding there on the bottom. The familiar Motorola dimple with the camera housing there and everything. On the top, you can see you've got your uh, SIM tray, micro SD, you've got your headphone jack here, you've got your power button, you've got your volume buttons here, and then of course you've got your camera and everything. One thing you will notice, I'll mention in a bit, it's one of the downsides to this, it only has one speaker on here, and then of course you've got your charging port down there at the bottom. Now this phone is really easy to hold in hand. I do like the 5.4 inch screen size. It's a screen size you don't see that often. The Motorola dimple is nice because it's right where your finger sits, rests easily in the hand. The leather back, I love. I love that with the gold. That's actually probably what convinced me to get it is I liked this particular option. Now this is a premium option. I think this one is 648, whereas the, or 658, whereas the regular Droid Turbo 2, I believe was about 600 at launch on Verizon. You can also use Moto Maker to customize your Droid Turbo 2 just as you've done with the Moto X Pure. So that's one of the things that makes this an appealing option this year. But of course, the one thing that makes this very, very unappealing is that it's only available for Verizon customers. Now, if you look at the compared to the Moto X Pure Edition, which you see I have right here, the gold is of course very similar because they're both made by Motorola, as is the camera housing there in the dimple. No droid branding, it's a little bit cleaner there on the back. Of course, it's also a bigger phone, so you can see it's taller. And it's also, well, the Droid Turbo 2 actually is a bit wider but the Moto X Pure is definitely a lot taller. It does have a 5.7 inch screen, and there's some other differences we'll talk about technically in just a second. But overall, I think the cleaner of the two in terms of appearance, this one's got some branding from Verizon and then the Droid brand on there. The Moto X Pure is definitely the cleaner of the two in appearance, but I definitely like the build of both, and both of them are easy to hold in the hand. The Droid Turbo 2, of course, a little bit easier because it's a smaller phone. So now that we've talked about the build of the phone a little bit and give you a bit of a comparison to the Moto X Pure, let me talk about the features of this phone. I'll inevitably give you some more comparisons to the Moto X Pure. The first thing I want to talk about since we're already we're talking about the build is the screen here. Now the main or one of the main selling points of this phone is the Shattered Shield technology, which has these multiple layers on the screen here. You've got your sort of screen protector I mentioned with the Verizon logo over top. You've got multiple layers that prevent this thing from shattering. Now, Motorola has a four-year warranty on that to guarantee you it's not going to shatter. I didn't drop my phone on purpose, but I've seen a lot of videos where people did do drop tests. Everything seems to be perfectly fine. You're definitely not going to shatter the screen. The issue that I have with this phone is that it's a P-OLED, plastic OLED display, and it should have really deep blacks and really vibrant colors. Now, the colors are vibrant, but they are not nearly as vibrant as the colors on, for instance, my Galaxy Note 5 or my S6 Edge Plus, which also have AMOLED panels. I think the, the multiple layers and the shatter shield technology definitely washes out some of the colors. I also don't get as deep of blacks as I do on those other phones. So that is one of the downsides to display for me. The Moto X Pure, of course, as we know, has the IPS LCD display, has better viewing angles, of course, than the Droid Turbo 2. And also, the Droid Turbo 2 is a little bit better suited to doing things like Moto Active Display because of the AMOLED technology. 
but the washed out colors were a little bit disappointment when you've got this beautiful QHD display here, nice 5.4 inch screen with a high pixel density. It's a little disappointing to see washed out colors and it's especially noticeable if you have a really bright sort of colorful background. The first place I noticed it, and this is one another great feature of the uh, Droid Turbo 2, you get these Star Wars wallpapers. I was using this BB-8 wallpaper and I had downloaded it actually to use the BB-8 wallpaper on my Note 5 as well. And I had set it on both and I noticed the color on the orange was quite a bit more washed out on the Turid Turbo 2 than it was on my Note 5. So, you know, that's just one issue. If that's not a huge deal to you, it's not a huge problem. Everything still looks crisp. The blacks do still look darker than they do on an LCD panel, but just an issue I noticed. Uh, the next thing, the software, this should be pretty quick because it's pretty similar to the Moto X Pure, which again, I talked about and said I liked it quite a bit. You've got all the standard sort of Motorola built-in features. You've got your Moto Voice, you've got the Moto Active Display, all of these things that make a Motorola phone sort of worth using. And then you also have the underlying stock Android experience there, which a lot of other people enjoy. So that gives sort of the best of both worlds. You've Motorola definitely adds in features that you want to use while still keeping those features uh, as stock as possible, as close to Google's experience for people who like that experience. Now, the one thing you're going to notice, if you can see right there, it's got Android 5.1.1 Lollipop. So it's not running Marshmallow yet, and the Moto X Pure does have Marshmallow. So if you get this phone, you're going to be running the previous gen software. A Marshmallow update's coming. There was some beta testing being done by Verizon workers, but it hasn't come out yet. So overall, I definitely like the software experience on here. Very close to stock with those added Motorola features. It does have quite a bit of Verizon bloat. You can see there Verizon Protect, Navigate, My Verizon. Message Plus, all this garbage you probably don't really want on your phone. But again, that is the downside of having, you know, a Verizon branded exclusive phone. And that's one of the reasons I've held off on buying the Droid phones. This is the first one I've bought since the Droid X. That was the last time I bought a Droid branded phone. So the software, definitely great. Uh, the display leaves a little bit to desired in my mind. The camera, the next thing I want to talk about. Now the camera on the Moto X Pure, I really liked in daylight. And I said it was kind of average when it comes to low light. That's still true in the case of this phone. It has a very simple interface though, and I do think it's a little bit better in low light than the Moto X Pure. Now they do have the same sensor, so those differences could be due to software or whatever. You can see here you've got an HDR mode, which is on by default. You can set your flash. Oops. You got your change focus and exposure right here, so you can slide here to slide the brightness, etc. You've got your video mode, which you can record HD 1080p. You can also record oops, slow mo 720p. Ultra HD 4K, and then you've got your widescreen versus standard. You can switch this to the 4-3 ratio if you want to get the full 21 megapixel uh, resolution from the camera. So overall, the sensor is pretty good. Again, I think it's a little better in low light than the Moto X Pure. Um, it's not the greatest in low light. It's not Note 5 quality. It's not even Nexus 6P quality. I'll show you a few photos that I shot here. I'll try to post a link to the photo album below. I have some of these photos on my Instagram as well. Here's a selfie I shot with the front-facing camera, which I think is also quite good on this phone. Uh, I shot this nice, it took me a few shots as you can see, shot this nice photo of my Nexus 6P in gold. It's got some nice uh, autofocus on this phone. It zooms, it gets the focus a little bit quicker than the Moto X Pure, which sometimes struggled to get the autofocus right away. You can see I struggled getting the perfect light though, because it was a little bit low light inside. These are some garbage photos I took on the road. This is a picture of my mom here at the national championship. We went to Alabama versus Clemson here in Phoenix. We're big Bama fans. Some more pictures of the stadium. I took just a ton of pictures trying to get the perfect one for each one. This is outside the pregame there. Got the Alabama elephant. It's a picture of my mom's face painting, which I think is a really nice picture. Another selfie from me looking rough in the morning, getting my tickets from StubHub. But overall, some really good shots I took outdoors. This is another one with really good lighting my mom and of the stadium. So overall, I'll try to post an album, some of my pictures from the game. You can see the outdoor light, and then you can also see some of my indoor shots with the low light, like the one with the Nexus 6P. I think this camera is better than the Moto X Pure, but it's not a sizable difference like it would be from this to the Note 5 or from this to the Nexus 6P. I think those are better cameras overall. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is the battery life, and really that is the thing where this phone shines. You can see I've got 90% right now. Uh, this phone can easily get you through two days if you're a moderate user, maybe even if you're a heavy user. I consider myself a moderate to heavy user on most days when I'm doing YouTube sort of stuff, sometimes a heavier user. But this phone has gotten me through. I just charge the phone, so not much to see in the battery department there. You can see here the stats that I have right now. 
This phone has easily gotten me through at least six hours screen on time uh, for my moderate usage. And when heavy use, I still get almost five hours of screen on time. I would say this phone has the best battery life of any current phone that I own. It has a huge battery in it, I believe 3700 to 3750. Don't quote me on, it's one of those two, so I'm not going to commit to one and then someone say that I'm wrong. But it has a huge battery in this phone and the battery literally lasts forever. This is the reason I took this phone with me uh, to the football game, to the national championship, even though I had my Note 5 as well, took most of my pictures with that. But once the Note 5 died, I took this out and I could just keep taking pictures forever, texting, tweeting, doing whatever I want. This phone will last forever. So the battery is really impressive. And then the last thing I want to mention is the performance. So a lot of people ask me, you know, does the Snapdragon 810 overheat because this has got an 810? The Moto X Pure has an 808. Does the Snapdragon 810 get really hot on this phone? And I've not noticed any overheating issues with this phone. Now, I've played quite a few games. You guys know my standard ones. i got Balloon Tower Defense. Uh, we've got One More Dash and Motor Hero there. And then also I played a lot of Temple Run 2 over the break. You guys can see there. I played all those games, watched YouTube, Netflix, used this phone pretty much the entire time I was at the football game. And I had no overheating with this, just using it continuously for hours on end. It rarely gets even slightly warm to the touch, and the leather, of course, maybe works as an insulator, so that's a possibility, but I've never noticed any heating issues, even on putting my finger here on the metal uh, Motorola dimple. It's never got hot at all, so I've had no performance issues. It doesn't really blow anything out of the water on the benchmarks. This guy right here, Moto X Pure, it benchmarks at about 52,000. This guy benchmarks at about 58,000, so... Really not a huge performance bump, but I've noticed absolutely no lag on this phone, and I've also had no sort of performance hiccups or overheating when playing games, etc. So overall, this phone, compared to the Moto X Pure, it's a lot more expensive, so between 600 and 650, maybe even 700 if you get the 64 gigabyte version, but it definitely has some appealing features. It's got the shatter shield technology. It's got a smaller screen if you want that. It's got a much bigger battery a slightly better camera, and of course, you still get the great customization options, you still get the same sort of stock software experience, you get all of that stuff, and you also get those features that I just mentioned. So if you really need the Shatter Shield technology, if you feel like you're a clumsy person, this is definitely a good phone for you. If you're someone who needs that great battery life, this is also a great phone for you. But at the end of the day, if you really want to save some money, the Moto X Pure at $399 is just a great value if you compare it to the Droid Turbo 2. So I definitely can recommend both phones. It just depends on which of those two cases that you're in. All right, guys, I appreciate you checking out the video. That is the end of my full review of the Droid Turbo 2. If you guys would like and subscribe, if you haven't already, I really appreciate it. Find me writing at news.highonandroid.com and dopetechdaily.com at the links in the description. You can also follow me at Google Plus and Twitter at those same links. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching.